Hello. I thought it might be interesting to talk to you about why I needed this after I got my heavy cold. Believe me, this has to do with international politics. And it goes like this. My mother was a colossally untalented parent and to disguise the fact that she didn't really like to cuddle her children she spent her time cleaning the house was always spotless she was very proud of that and she told me once or twice uh, you know later on that so uh, there were many times when she she measured her length on the kitchen floor because she'd slipped on the polished f polished waxing that she'd done on the on the floor it was so well polished now i as a child had lots and lots and lots of colds i was a first child it's very common for this to happen with first children because the houses are clean. And so first children tend to be the ones, if there are going to be allergies, they tend to be the ones who get them. And I got lots of allergies. My mother said, oh, you, you had colds that went on for weeks. Well, of course, nobody had colds that went on for weeks. Those dreadful coughs I had, those sneezing fits, those runny eyes, they were all from allergies. Now, there was no reason for me to get those allergies. The fact is that my home was so clean. Everything was so absolutely pristine that my system, as it grew up, did not have anything to do. It didn't have anything to fight. And so it found something to fight. It started overreacting to the smallest irritant, with the result now that I have hundreds of allergies of all sorts of things, all sorts of weird things. Actually, what I have is what's known as a silver birch allergy. You can look it up if you want. But it's a very broad spectrum of allergic responses. So what happens when I get a really bad cold, and I really did have a terrible cold, uh, it just goes to my chest, my chest, the bronchi constrict, and then I can't breathe, and, and then I need something like this to open everything up. And it's probably because of my mother's obsession with cleanliness when I was a small child. I, and, and being a girl, that made it even worse because, of course, girls are not encouraged to play in the mud. Uh, boys are allowed to get a bit muddy from time to time, but girls never. So I had this double whammy. Well, I was put in mind of that by a video by Black Pigeon Speaks. I'm sorry, I've forgotten what it's called now, but I'll try and find it and, and put the uh, the thing in the description the title, uh, in which he said he was talking about a theory that when civilizations have become so uh, well organized and peaceful for too long, then it, they start eating themselves because they have no external irritants anymore. It very much reminds me of my mother's behavior. Things are so peaceful and well-ordered and we don't even, as of yet, have rampaging diseases to fight or, or, you know, there are fewer and fewer deadly diseases. And because of that, people are acting in mad ways to provide themselves with the sort of irritant that they are not getting from usual society, which until, well, I don't know, 60 years ago, was in a constant state of war and turmoil and 
disruption. So we, as a world, and obviously there are people dying in battles, obviously there's still disease, obviously there are still problems, but apparently not enough. And what is happening is we are exhibiting the sort of allergic response as a society that I am exhibiting because of my uh, mother's obsession with a well-ordered house when I was growing up. Now, I'm tying that in with a video I saw in which Peter Hitchens was being interviewed and he was telling the interviewer, again, I don't remember the name, but I'll, I'll look through my history and I'll, I'll put the link uh, in the description. Uh, Peter Hitchens was saying that the world's going to hell in a handbasket and uh, he's getting quite relaxed about the doom that we are uh, facing. And he, it struck me that he was doing exactly the same things as the climate catastrophists are talking about. That is, we're all doomed. It's terrible. Uh, it, just because it's CO2 in some nutcase mental thing that people have about CO2 now. They're fixating on CO2. It was acid rain 30 years ago, uh, and now it's CO2. This is a total load of complete horse balls, but yeah, what, what, you know, I'm just thinking of a lot of swear words here, which is stopping me from talking. Uh, it was, it's one fear after the other. We are all doomed. At the moment, they're fixating on CO2, as I said. It'll be something else in a little while. It's just a way of creating fear, an artificial fear because we don't have enough of the real thing. And Peter Hitchens, uh, his, um, his fear is going to be a moral decay of the Western world. Uh, but it's, it's nevertheless, it's just the same. He's talking about this terrible lack of social um, cohesion. And, and there is that happening i'm not denying that and the other guys are talking about global warming and there is that i'm not denying that but the fact is that there is a fix in both cases that's the thing global warming might be happening it might be us it might be just natural cycle whatever it is we can fix it we can put our minds to it and we can sort out our environment. What those Swedish nutcases are trying to tell us to do is panic. No, just put our heads down and work out a solution. And what Peter Hitchens is saying is we should just, just relax and let evil overcome us. And again, no. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm still not over this cold, am I? <clears throat> no, we fix that as well. The doomsayers are leading us down this tunnel. And I, I have a lot of respect for Peter Hitchens' intelligence, but I think he has discovered, just like Greta Thunberg has discovered, that there's money in doom. And I am not going to accept that because I know we can deal with it. We don't talk about doom. We talk about the problems that we face. And then we talk about how we fix those problems, not how we just panic or, or just relax into allowing the chaos to wash over us. Yeah, well, that's all. If you want to donate or contact, the information will be rolling over the Granny Opteryx as I speak. Please like, subscribe and share because it does help with the algorithm. 
If you visit my channel on YouTube and one day discover that I've disappeared without warning, you'll still find me on BitChute or Minds. Just go to either of those platforms and do a search for Granny Opteryx. If you're already watching this on BitChute or Minds, good for you. Meanwhile, if you're watching this on YouTube, remember that you must keep checking the subscribe and bell icons because occasionally they reset. Till next time.